You're looking at a simulation of a 16 QAM signal being applied to a circuit and then analyzed with vector signal analyzer software. Everything looks pretty normal until you take a look at the schematic and realize that the device under test is not in system view at all, it's in ADS. So the simulation we just saw is really a co-simulation between the two tools. And this video will show you how to do that. We begin on the ADS side where the circuit resides. This block accepts the input waveform from system view. And this one sends the resulting waveform back to system view for analysis. Those are required. The device under test here is just a couple of behavioral models, but can be anything. Your schematic can go all the way down to the device level if you'd like. Here we have a voltage controlled amplifier followed by a regular amplifier too, which will compress if it's driven too hard. There's a couple of values you need to get right for this to work. One is the carrier frequency needs to be set to the characterization frequency on the system view side. Second, the time step needs to be the same as in system view. Here it's set to one over 61.44 megahertz, which happens to be the sample rate on system view. You may not need this block here. The reason why it's here is because there are actually two signals coming in on the bus and they need to be separated on separate lines so that we can route the RF through the device and the bias voltage through that third pin on the voltage controlled amplifier. This example was set up for an envelope tracking example. If you're not doing anything like that, you may not need a splitter here. Once the circuit is right, then have ADS generate a net list. By default, the net list is stored in the current workspace folder in a file called netlist.log. And that is why we have pointed to that netlist file that we just created here from system view. This is the installation directory of ADS. The only other remarkable setting is this block size. It's been set to 100 instead of the default one. This is because it's much more efficient to send 100 samples at a time for computation and it speeds up the simulation quite a bit. The reason we needed that splitter was because there are two signals entering the ADS COSIM block. One is the 16 QAM signal. The other is a constant that is supposed to represent the bias voltage. In an envelope tracking simulation, you send the bias voltage with every time step. And that's what this sliding control is supposed to simulate. Let's run the simulation one more time while adjusting the slider to see its effect. We can adjust it so that the gain is so low that noise takes over. We can adjust it to the sweet spot where the EVM is nice and low. And we can overdrive so that compression takes place and EVM jumps up again. That's how you set up a co-simulation between system view and ADS. Thanks for watching.